Come on. Oh, Let's give another round of applause. Yeah. All right. Thank you. All right. Well, yeah. First of all, big thanks to the East Denver crew for putting this together. It's insane amount of work. So please appreciate them. Yeah. Let's give them. All right. Great. Thanks for coming here. I'll uh, introduce blockchain operating system, the concept. I'm Ilya, co-founder of Near Protocol and CEO of Pagoda. And I want to start with a vision, right? We all here because we believe in okay, the same concept, that we want people to own their own identity, we want people to own their own assets, we want people to own their data, and we obviously want to own their, our own decisions. And this is a concept of open web, web3, kind of crypto, blockchain, all of those concepts. but are we there? We still have Web2, right? Most of the applications, most of the stuff on my phone is still running by a large corporations that where all the data, all the identity belongs to this company. We still need to use banking account where the money actually sits in the bank and they do whatever they want with it. They have their own kind of siloed identities, right? Like the identity you have in one app doesn't really link to an identity in another app. The reputation you build in Uber doesn't translate to reputation in Lyft. The, you know, the bank account don't really link together either. And like moving between them, switching costs is really high. And co these companies have control over what features you can use, what fees they charge, they can always block account, you know, remove you, do something. And at the end, they're centralized parties. They keep getting attacked, the data getting leaked, they misuse the data, you know, people make mistakes because they have all of this kind of in one place. Now, we're all here, you know, it's been going for a while. I, this is my fifth uh, uh, East Denver. So we're all building cool stuff, right? There's a lot of cool blockchain technology. And I have, like, if you, have three of this, you have a bingo, uh, so in, the, in your pitch deck. Uh, but the point is, like, we're aiming to bring this to mass adoption. We're aiming to bring this to users across the world, but we don't really have a like, clear plan, right? There's like, this lots of cool blockchain tech, dot, 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 you know, figure it out, one billion users. And the reality is, until now, we still have a lot of the same problems. We have a disjoint experiences. We have you know, different blockchains where you have your different reputations as well. We have kind of networks and, and applications that are like not really integrating between each other. You have applications themselves running centralized servers, right? That you, to, so if you want to access a smart contract, they still need to go to some centralized server. And that centralized server can get attacked. It leaks data. There's logs of everything you're doing that don't belong to you. You have you know, this identities problem, like how, how many like, wallets you have and how many different uh, accounts you have. And you still don't have a set of common services that we really get used to in Web2, where you can search across all the things. You can uh, you know, get notifications about the things that are going on in, in the platform. So like, until right now, Web3 has been extremely disjointed, not very connected experience that actually creates more and more separation as we go and as we launch more and more uh, different technologies. So what we want to introduce is the concept of blockchain operating system. It's a common layer for browsing and discovering open web experiences, and it's compatible with any blockchain. It unites the identity, the applications across all the blockchains, allows the user to have their own data and own identity assets belonging to them, being able to access them, without really un needing to know which blockchain works, where it is, and how it's all linked together. And so one thing you need to remember is near is the boss. <laughs> and why, why is this? Because we've, from the start, been building a lot of pieces to not just build the blockchain, but actually create a really simple onboarding. We've been focusing on creating developer tooling that enables everyone to build versatile applications. And on top of it, we're adding now search and discovery flexibil uh, capabilities. We're adding social and notifications, kind of all of the functionality that we're used to when we're talking about Web2 platforms, right? You go to Twitter, imagine Twitter without notifications and search. What are you going to do? This is how Web3 right now looks like. And so the new concept that we're adding is composable apps. 
It's the idea that instead of just kind of having you know, websites siloed across, you want having one place where all of the on-chain experiences can come in. How does this work? Well, the blockchain operating system has a tech stack. Obviously, on the you know, security, data availability, blockchain layer is where you know, near protocol, Ethereum, layer twos, other blockchains sit. There's a data platform that unites all this data across all these blockchains in a format that applications can use. Right? right now, it's done through Infura, through Indexers, through Pagoda, through various ways. So we're creating a protocol for, for this to kind of unite the data platform. And finally, we're launching a new kind of component called Discovery, which is a composable front end. And I'll show you how it looks. And so what it allows to do is to have these components themselves, the front ends, the pieces of the front end that connects blockchain and user on chain and kind of recomposable for you when you're browsing uh, the experiences. You don't need to have kind of a specific you know, website where only there the front end is accessible. It's accessible through any gateway. You can, you know, in the future, run a local node even or local application or um, any other way to access this. So why is Near Protocol doing this? Well, this was always our vision. And to achieve this vision, we built the protocol to make sure it's fast, because you don't want to you know, get users to really wait for like, saving front ends, interacting with this. You know, if we're talking about social, like 12 seconds is not very um, realistic. It needs to scale. It needs to have you know, ability to scale to billions of users, which the only way is to do sharding. And finally, to make this onboarding possible, you really need to have a flexible account model. And so we have various key management tools. We have meta transactions. We have guest accounts. We have uh, fast authentication with biometrics. All of this coming together to truly enable a uh, blockchain operating system. So I mentioned you have a blockchain operating system in the core, but you have all of these places you can access it from. Right? So near.org will be kind of uh, the gateway we're launching. A Proximity Labs, one of the companies in the ecosystem, launched a DeFi hub, and I'll show you how it looks. We have wallets that can integrate this. We have even browsers that can actually support near column slash slash to look this up directly from the blockchain. And it is actually multi-chain. What this means is you can use smart contracts from any chain. You have a data abstraction layer, decentralized front ends, and any wallet that can access it. And kind of this connects really all of these ecosystems into one place for the users to find, discover, and interact with it. And the idea is that operating system really handles kind of the identity management, the connectivity, the bridging, remote accounts, and routing. And you as a developer can just use different parts. Ideally, you as a developer are able to build applications that span multiple blockchains. And you still don't have any reliance on centralized infrastructure. You can always switch from one data provider to another. You can switch from one gateway to another. And you can al always have, you know, even uh, switch between blockchains. So how does this look like? So we launched yesterday alpha.near.org. This is kind of our alpha experience for Near specifically. It, it is a developer social network right now, starting kind of bootstrapping this um, with developers building first applications. It has a social features already. It has some games. It has kind of news, experiences, people. So you can start navigating it. Uh, the idea is it's mobile friendly. It's mobile kind of focused because we believe more and more users will be coming to this um, on one side and obviously developer uh, on a desktop. We already have over 2,000 people jo joining it, and we have over 1,800 components built right, of various levels, like everything from an NFT rendering component up to a full like, laser game. You can always look at, a at any point which component you're looking at, which exact uh, kind of application you, you are at, and you can go and look up the information, who built it. Uh, what's the description? So again, you don't need to rely that this is like built by someone running centralized. You can always look up where it is. And more importantly, you can look at the code. You can actually access the code, look wh what is actually being rendered for you, and what dependencies it has. So like, 
you know what, I don't like this home screen. I want something else. You can fork it, and you can start you know, modifying it, or maybe you can switch the feed to something else. All of this is like, really available for developers. And for users, more and more no-code experiences will be available as well. So it, already, you can switch pretty much the right panel without any code just by selecting what you want there. It comes in with, all kind of, with a lot of GitHub type features because it's on chain, everything is stored on chain, and so you can actually see the commit history of this component. If you don't like what the front end is changing to, you can always go back, fork it off, modify it, or keep it the old version and use it. So the idea is like you now have in control what exactly experience you have, and as a developer, you're in control of all of the things that you depend on and can provide the experience you want. So it kind of comes together, this developer and user experience in one place. And that's why we call it operating system, because kind of operating systems provide this kind of abstraction over hardware. And in this case, blockchains are hardware. They provide a common set of services like search, notifications, you know, social, et cetera. And they give developers you know, a set of APIs that they can just use and not think about it. And for users, they create this platform where they can find these applications and start experiencing them. So this is an example of like forking a component and starting to hack on it. Um, and you can always you know, start searching, finding uh, various things. So one thing to show is somebody has built a game inside this platform. It's called uh, Laser Chess. Uh, I invite everyone to play it because it's kind of cool. Uh, I still have not won over a computer. Um, and so the idea is that you can actually build really complex experiences directly embedded into this. All the users who are looking for, for example, game will find it. You get initial user base right away. And you have other developers who can mod it and modify it and start playing with it. So like, you know, all this vision of composable gaming is coming together here. So it is a two-sided market. And you know, there's developers and users, developers building applications, and users starting to experience and, and um, on board. And obviously, today, right, with Alpha, we focus on developers and super fans, crypto, crypto community, to really start kind of creating, forking, you know, and composing these experiences to build something really interesting, right? Because we have all these like bits and pieces of. Uh, you know, financial stack of gaming, of uh, like DAOs and governance, but it's all all over the place, right? There's no like place where you can come in and see like what are the different DAOs that exist or between all the chains. What is a different financial kind of product you can do when you experience this? So this is what we're doing now, and kind of as this matures, we'll have you know all these gateways like near the org, which provide users their end kind of uh, like experiences that they're actually looking for. It's earning through micro tasks, it, through commerce. It's you know, access to finance wherever you are. It's complex apps that, that kind of putting all of these pieces together. It's you know, unstoppable chats and games. So we're at East Denver. It's a Ethereum conference. And so I mentioned any blockchain. So here's an example of a Lido app on, this, on the same platform. Uh, I'm, I'm connected with my MetaMask, and uh, you, know, you can interact with this app directly from here. So this is just shows you you can build LIDAR application, and you can go in same thing, look at source code and start hacking on it. You can modify the address. You can switch it, for example, from working on uh, Ethereum to Polygon, and uh, you can you know, completely change it to, for example, do something else. Now, there's another one. Uh, somebody from a proximity team has built a Canto uh, example as well for Canto swap. So again, you connect with your MetaMask and you can interact with Canto. So the idea is like it's that easy to start like building on this and interacting. And so we have twenty thousand dollars worth of bounties to build Ethereum experiences in this platform. So if you go to boss.gg, this is kind of the where you can find more about the hackathon. You can click on Lido to see the example, and you can go in the menu and see the source code and fork it. So twenty thousand dollars worth of bounties. Any Ethereum project, build the front end, start hacking. As soon as you do that, other developers will see it. They can start modifying it. So you can kind of enter in this open source phase of front ends. So here's a link for getting some near to actually hack all these components. I invite everyone who is uh, hacking uh, at East Denver to, to grab that. 
So I just want to kind of finish on, the, on this idea, right? So Near has started as a blockchain, but it's not just a blockchain, right? We have built Web3 identity through kind of a extensible account model. We have a lot of developer tooling across the spectrum. We just launched JavaScript SDK uh, v1, which means you can use it for any use case. We have multi-chain interoperability between Aurora that allows to run EVM contracts, Rainbow Bridge that connects to Ethereum in a trustless way. We have fast onboarding coming that allows to use Face ID, fingerprint uh, to create an account without users ever seeing the seed phrases. We have now Social Graph that allows you to build on top of it and create really rich experiences. We have now Composable Frontends that allows you to create extremely kind of you know, fast experience. From my, from, and I'm not a really good front engineer, but for me, building on this has been actually faster than any other front end experience because you can kind of pull the pieces that already exist really quickly. You can see how it works, and you don't need to care about scaffolding. And finally, it's still a blockchain protocol underneath that powers a lot of this, but there's all, all the other blockchain protocols connecting to this. And that's what we call blockchain operating system. Thank you. Thank you.